Hello, everybody. Welcome to Look, Live, and Be Better on Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, America's holistic plastic surgeon. Uh, we've got, I think, a very interesting uh, show tonight about food. And these are seven surprising food facts uh, that you really must know. And I think you'll find some of these, uh, once again, surprising. Some of them may be a little bit, sh a little bit shocking, and hopefully all of them very eye-opening. Uh, so let's get started. I hope that your Wednesday night, your Wednesday evening is going well. All right, so first thing, what is the problem with GMO foods, genetically modified organisms? Well, some people call these foods frankenfoods because these are foods that basically have their genes modified for one reason or another. Now, the main reason why GMOs are modified the way they are is so that they can actually tolerate the pesticide Roundup. So, there's a big company called Monsanto uh, that creates a pesticide that's called Roundup, and these pesticides basically kill weeds. Well, they have developed these genetically modified um, uh, crops, corn, soybean, those types of things, uh, and they have modified them so that they can be more resistant to the effects of the Roundup, of this pesticide, so that you can use stronger and stronger pesticides and not necessarily kill off the crops. Good idea, right? You know, hey, you can kill the weeds, you get a better uh, harvest, but the problem is, is that these pesticides can potentially stay on the product. You may get residues of these pesticides on these GMO corn and soybean and other crops, and these residues have been known to create cancer. So that's why GMO foods are so bad for you, is because these foods can contain residues of pesticides because once again, because they're GMO, they tolerate stronger pesticides, so more and stronger pesticides can be used with it, and those can be even worse for your health. So how do you, how do you solve that? Well, ideally, if you can afford it and if you have access to it, try to eat organic. Um, otherwise, if you don't, make sure you really wash off the skins off of certain fruits, let's say like apples, uh, and when you can, try to avoid those GMO-type foods. Well, did you know that soda pop can shorten your life? Yes, there was a study that found that uh, drinking soda pop regularly can actually shorten the length of the ends of your chromosomes, and these are called telomeres. So our chromosomes uh, all have telomeres, which are the ends of the chromosomes, and as we get older and as our life gets shorter, those telomeres get shorter and shorter. And what they found is that by drinking pop, soda pop, you can actually shorten those. And they found that just one 22 ounce soda pop a day can shorten your life by about 4.6 years. That's a big deal because that is actually pretty equivalent to smoking. Okay, so soda pop, one 22 ounce of soda pop uh, is comparable in shortening your life to actually smoking. One 22 ounce per day. All right, so big deal. If you can, try to avoid soda pop. There's so much sugar in it that's bad for you. Um, chemicals, so try to avoid it when you can. Well, did you know that your olive oil might be fake? There was a shocking study that found that 60 to 90% of the olive oil sold in the United States is adulterated. And these olive oils are actually adulterated with cheaper and less healthy vegetable oils. So it's peanut oil, soybean oil, palm oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil. These vegetable type oils are added into the extra virgin olive oil and non-extra virgin olive oil, adulterating them, making them cheaper to make. Okay, unfortunately, it won't say that on the bottle. So be very careful with the olive oil that you purchase if you're questioning whether the olive oil that you're buying is legit or whether it's adulterated, check out our website, truthandoliveoil.com, and they can give you some definite suggestions. Or you can Google it, and there is information online about how to tell if your olive oil is real or fake. Well, did you know that grass-fed beef is definitely healthier for you than grain-fed beef? Well, this is something that I have mentioned briefly before in, in an earlier show, but grass-fed beef actually has more omega-3 fatty acids, which are healthy anti-inflammatory fatty acids, and they have less of the bad inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids than grain-fed beef. And it's pretty simple. Uh, the 
the quality of the, the meat that you eat is dependent on what the meat that you are eating, what that ate. Okay, so put it in another way that what your cow eats um, and uh, is going to determine how healthy that cow is for you to eat yourself. Okay, so when cows are fed a diet of grain, of corn uh, especially, and, and a lot of the cows now in these factory farms, they're fed mainly corn because corn is cheap because the United States government subsidizes farmers to make corn. Because there's so much corn and it's so cheap and it fattens up the cows so quickly, that's what these factory farms will feed the cows. Well, unfortunately, that makes the cow, the beef, much worse for you than if that those cows are basically um, allowed to eat grass, which is what they have evolved to basically do. Uh, so if you can, try to source your meat and try to uh, preferentially buy and eat meat that is grass-fed because it is going to be much better for you than grain-fed meat, grain-fed beef. Well, that's also true for fish. Believe it or not, wild-caught fish is much healthier for you than farm-raised fish. Well, farm-raised fish are often fed grains as well. Can you believe that? So fish that are raised on farms are often fed corn and other grains because, once again, it's so cheap for them to be fed that. Now, fish are not naturally made to eat corn. That doesn't make any sense, but they're fed this. And like beef, it causes the actual meat, the fish meat, to not be as good for you. So wild-caught fish actually have more healthy omega-3 fatty acids and less unhealthy omega-6 fatty acids than farm-raised fish. And there are some nutritionists and doctors that actually believe that farm-raised fish is actually bad for you. The omega-6s, are they're so high, the levels are so high in some of those fish that it is better for you not to eat the fish at all than to buy farm-raised fish. So definitely something for you to look into if you are a fish lover. And this may shock some of you, but did you know that eating meat is actually worse for the environment, for climate change, than cars? Yes. Now, livestock produces anywhere from 18 to 25% of the greenhouse gas em uh, emissions in the, in the world. This is 40% more than the entire transport sector combined. Hard to believe, right, that actually the, the fact that around the world we eat so much meat that this livestock and the creation of this meat for us to eat is worse for the environment than driving all of the cars that there are. Well, and this is because there's so many factors involved in creating, in creating meat that we consume. It's the agriculture part of it. You know, it's the methane that, that the cows at the beef produce. It's deforestation that's, that is created to, in order to plant the crops, the grains that are used to feed these animals. And it's the transport. You know, a lot of the meat that people buy at your, at your grocery store, that may have been transported hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to get to your grocery store, and that is gasoline that's being used. So if you look at one pound of beef, you know, what does one pound of beef, beef truly cost? Well, it costs anywhere from 441 to 1,800 gallons of water to produce a pound of beef. It, it takes approximately one gallon of gasoline to produce a pound of beef and approximately 12 pounds of grain. And if you were to take those 12 pounds of grain and use that to feed people who are hungry and who don't have food, that's going to go much farther than a single pound of beef, obviously, uh, for, for feeding the, the hungry. It's also important to realize, if you're a meat eater, that you actually have double the carbon footprint of vegans and vegetarians. Okay, so if you are an environmentalist, this is something definitely that you want to take note, that actually eating meat is not good for the environment. And number seven, artificial sweeteners are bad for you. So, so many of us, we drink diet sodas, diet pop, uh, because we think it's better for us than the regular soda. Well, unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Now, these type of artificial sweeteners, they trick your taste buds. Now, typically, these artificial sweeteners, uh, whether it's Splenda, whether it is um, aspartame or any of these, they are so hyper and super sweet that it causes your taste buds to get used to, to this hyper and sweet uh, <coughs> flavor. And so, because your taste buds get used to this super sweet flavor, that's what they expect they're going to get. Now, if you weren't having this, you may have an apple 
or an orange and a strawberry and, and find that, wow, that is sweet and it tastes good. But when your taste buds are so used to these hyper, hyper sweet foods, then it causes those other foods that are actually good for you. Once again, strawberries, oranges, apples, to not taste nearly as good as you may think. And that's one reason why people who eat a lot of artificial sweeteners, who eat it every day, actually find that they're more likely to be overweight. 65% are more likely to be 65 percent more likely to be overweight if you eat artificial sweeteners than if you don't. Also, artificial sweeteners are definitely known to increase the risk of diabetes. So, if you think that a diet soda is actually better for you, try to think again. Drink water. You know, if you need some type of flavor in it, try to have add natural uh, fruit to it, fruit uh, flavoring to it. Um, but try to avoid. Uh, those artificial sweeteners, those diet sodas, they are not good for you. And also, finally, these are chemicals. You know, these are fake food. These are foods that are produced in a, in a laboratory, in a factory, and, and they're not something that ideally you, you should ingest. So those are seven surprising food facts 